Hi folks, today we're looking at the Backbone 1 PlayStation Edition controller for iPhone. Now I've been testing this out for about a week now and it's good, it's really good, but it's not for everyone depending on what kind of gamer you are. Let me tell you all about it. Hi folks, welcome back to the channel and today we're talking about gaming, portable gaming to be specific. And with this Backbone 1 PlayStation Edition controller, you'll get to see what you get in the box, how to set it up, and then I'll go through my own review of the general features and the gaming experience using this product. So let's start with a brief history of me as a gamer. Now, although I never owned a console until I was in my 20s, I spent a good portion of my teenage years as a PC gamer. And up until recently, I was a dedicated Xbox fan. I had the original Xbox, the Xbox 360, and then eventually the Xbox One. And then last year, I decided to switch sides and I got myself a PS5. Primarily, this was because I don't get that much time to play games these days, and most of the games that I really wanted to play seemed to be coming out as PlayStation exclusives, so it seemed like the right move. And you know, I'm super happy with my switch over to Sony. I think the PlayStation 5 gaming experience is just great. And then recently I came across this little device from Backbone, which promises to offer all of the experience on the PlayStation, but in a portable setup right on my iPhone. And before we get into this review, I wanna make it totally clear that I bought this on the day one of release with my own money. So what you're about to hear isn't part of any paid collaboration, just my own experiences. So as we can see this is all nicely packaged up, we've got a little quick start guide here and here's the controller itself. Everything here feels pretty premium and each of the buttons has a nice obvious click to it. Now Backbone do make a matte version of this controller but I really like this new white style colour option which ties in with the new edition for PlayStation. As we can see there is an adapter included which is specifically for the iPhone 13 Pro and Pro Max just to ensure a snug fit. Now it fits in just here on the left hand side of the controller. Now Backbone say this adapter is not strictly necessary but it's included free of charge which is a nice touch. Now it's worth pointing out that at the time of making this video there is only an iPhone version of this controller available but the manufacturers do have an Android version on the way and you can sign up to be notified about that on their website. So on to setup and this is all really straightforward. The first thing you'll need to do if you haven't already is to make sure that remote play is enabled on your console. You'll then need to download the remote play app onto your phone and also the Backbone app too. More on this app in just a second. Now when you've signed into the Remote Play app, it'll ask you to connect to a console on the same network as your phone, and then your phone essentially becomes the controller, and your phone screen will stream what's going on on your PS5. And then it's simply a case of popping your phone into the controller like so. And we might as well just start up the Backbone app too. Now the first time you do this, it's gonna ask you to set up an account, and they will try to get you to sign up for a subscription to their Backbone Plus service at this stage. Now, I didn't do this as I only have one console, but if you're lucky enough to have the time to have Steam, Xbox, PlayStation, Google Stadia, iOS gaming, all going on at the same time, this app will allow you to consolidate them all into one place. It's a bit like the Apple Plus experience where you kind of have one platform, one portal that allows you to include all of the different content streams that you're interested in. Now this membership option also allows you to stream live to Twitch or YouTube if that's your thing. So the cost of the subscription is $49.99 US per year, which I think even in the age of everything's a subscription is quite a lot of money, it's about $4 a month. You do however get a two week free trial to test it out if you're curious to see if it works for you. Now even if you don't go for the subscription, it is worth still keeping this app on your phone as it's the only way of installing hardware updates onto the controller as and when they're available, as well as running calibrations on things like the joysticks or even submitting a warranty request. So that's as all set up, I'm ready to go. Let's have a look at some of the features and what it's like to game on. So first off, let's take a look at some of the specs. And one of the things that's really impressed me is how compact and light this controller is. It collapses down really easily when it's not in use and generally is pretty comfortable to hold for longer gaming sessions. Now, one thing that did take a little adapting to was that the PlayStation DualSense controller sits so nicely and naturally in your hands. And this one is considerably wider when I've got my iPhone 13 Pro Max attached. Probably more like a Nintendo Switch or even a PSP for those who can remember that far back. So for me, there was just something a bit unusual about the two joysticks being so far apart that did take a little bit of time to settle into. Another thing is that whilst the buttons feel premium and they are high quality, they are quite clicky and noisy compared to the DualSense controller. Mm -hmm. 
So don't be thinking you'll be able to use this device with some headphones on sitting in bed next to somebody uh, without causing quite a bit of noise. So Backbone claim this offers a very low latency collection and whilst this is generally true it kind of depends on what kind of games that you're playing. So some of the games I've been really enjoying at the moment are Hitman 3, uh, Ghost of Tsushima and also Spider-Man Miles Morales which all run beautifully on the setup with very little latency. However for games that require very quick response time and also those that might be being played over multiplayer I'm thinking about an FPS like Battlefield 2042, I have found that latency can cause an issue. Now I have got super fast broadband here and yet I was getting totally wiped out playing Battlefield using this controller versus switching to the DualSense controller where I was pretty much able to hold my own. So some other really nice touches here. Unlike the DualSense controller, it doesn't need charging. It actually draws power directly from your device via the lightning port. And if you're running low, there is a pass-through charger built into the bottom of the unit. So you can just plug in a lightning cable for any extended gaming sessions. And on the other side, we'll see a 3.5 mil headset jack. So you can always use the controller with a wired headset. And this jack also takes mic input too. So I've tended to use my AirPods Pro with this, and again, this works seamlessly with this setup. Now, as we'll see, we've got all of our usual buttons and joysticks, including the one and two bumpers and triggers round the back. Now, there are a couple of dedicated buttons. This orange one will actually launch the Backbone app. It can't be programmed to do anything else. So clearly, Backbone driving towards us being a bit like the on button when you connect your device, and they're promoting the subscription package as part of this. To be honest, I found this a bit annoying and a bit of a waste of space on the device. In my testing, I I occasionally kept hitting this button with my finger which then pulled me out of the remote play app and then I needed to reconnect again which disrupted what I was playing. Nice idea, poor execution. And then just next to this we have this button which brings up the pause menu and there are also these two buttons on the left so this one will do a variety of things depending on context so if you're in the middle of a game pressing this once will record your gameplay straight to your phone in full 1080p 60 fps format and then you can also hold this while recording to bookmark part of your play so by the way these features only work if you have the membership if you don't have the membership just pressing this will take a screenshot straight to your phone's camera roll which is a helpful feature and then this one here with the ellipsis will mute if you've got headphones connected. If you don't, it'll just bring up the options for recording. Now if you press and hold, this will take a screenshot direct to your PlayStation. So there is an obvious button missing, which is the dedicated PlayStation button. So to access things like the home screen or the game switcher, you'll need to touch these three dots on the screen. And when you do that, you'll see the virtual PlayStation button pop up, which allows you then to switch apps or to get into any of the home screen menus. Okay, and that's about it. Overall, I think if you're the sort of person that wants to take your next-gen gaming with you in a nice, portable setup, this is a good buy. Backbone have been really successful with their original black edition of this controller, and I'm sure the same will follow with this white colorway too. So finally, let's get into pricing. Now, this product currently retails for the same price either way if you're paying in dollars or sterling. Bad news if you're a Brit, it's $99.99 either way, which includes free shipping. Now, if you've got any questions about what this controller is like to use that I haven't covered here, just let me know in the comments below and I'll do my best to help. And if you've got this far in the video, do use the word spine here so that I know that you made it to the end. Now, a little while ago, I recorded a podcast with a friend of mine all about the psychology of play, which included some of the latest research into how important play is for us as part of our psychological well-being. And one of the little facts I dropped resulted in him saying the words... Why? How? So if you're interested in seeing what prompted him to have that reaction, I'll leave a link to that episode in the description below. As usual, folks, if you enjoyed this, please hit the like button. It really does help the channel out. And if you'd like to see more like this, maybe even a cheeky subscribe. I'll see you next time.